गुड आफ्टरनून कैन आई हैव माय स्लाइड्स प्लीज ओके आई हैव बीन असाइन ए टॉपिक व्हिच इज नथिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ ए फुल सेशन yes but i have tried it to takes around one day <laughs> i i so try to finish in 15 that minutes that is the art of a teacher, a teacher and a political person <laughs> you can put it into 15 minutes i have no or option or you can just give the topics and let us ask them the questions <laughs> let us see if they are interested and they will ask you what they want to ask you you can start the timer now rather than having started earlier so diagnostic tests there are many they are increasing every day the purpose of treatment is what the purpose of these diagnostic tests not of treatment but the purpose of diagnostic tests is to reduce the number of glaucoma suspects however many of these investigations are doing just the other way around they are adding to the number of glaucoma suspects which is a negative part of this but we will not go into the negative part we will go into the positive part and we will cover intraocular pressure angle evaluation disc evaluation and perimetry because oct is there in the next talk the diagnosis uh, uh, of glaucoma is based basically on the clinical with slit lamp examination basically which is used to rule out secondary glaucomas in the fundus examination which has to be 3d uh, without any doubt and intraocular pressure is no doubt uh, is the first and foremost requirement and gonioscopy to differentiate between angle closure and open angle and sometimes to find the cause of the secondary glaucoma the investigations are done structural or functional Func structural tests are fundus photo and imaging however the final initial diagnosis is always always clinical investigations are either supportive or they are useful for assessment of progression what is the hallmark of glaucoma diagnosis asymmetry and when you can't show asymmetry progression it's not only in the disc that asymmetry is important but there has to be corresponding asymmetry in the intraocular pressure imaging and fields wherever possible for example in case a, an eye with intraocular pressure one eye has 12 other eye has 18 and you are suspicious of glaucoma in the disc in 12 the answer is no it's not glaucoma so this is a, my video on tonometry which is world's maximally seen video with 1.5 lakh views on this topic in case anybody quickly wants to take a picture can take a picture of this this is based only on goldman epilation tonometry mainly so you all know that tonometry is basically indentation and epilation however there are other types now also included in this the many many instruments which are coming up which are shown out here and uh, they can be used some have some specific indications the epilation tonometry it's a simple flattening fixed force tonometers are no more in use they were popular in russia and now we use only the fixed area tonometers and the standard is uh, gold standard is goldman epilation tonometry indentation tonometry everybody is aware of this but they are very you know uh, problematic when there is core uh, scleral rigidity is high or very low so this is what goldman epilation tonometer is i'm sure all of you have seen and uh, this is uh, this is the view inside the tonometer the principle is that there is a plastic biprism which optically splits the tear film into two semicircles the edge of corneal contact is visible after placing fluorescein in, into the tear film and viewing with cobalt blue light so this is uh, the myers understanding of which is very important and this is based on centration thickness of fluorescein ring and epilation force and you can go through my video to know the details so this is what the correct alignment should look like the two uh, semicircle should interlock with equal size and width of the mire should be 1/10th of the total diameter pachymetry is now an essential part of the uh, of this intraocular pressure workup and it measures the thickness of cornea and the cornea thickness has a potential to influence eye pressure so that's why it's now part of the iop checkup uh, interpretation of intraocular pressure the normal range is considered to be 10 to 20 but it's not a hard and fast rule rise from 10 to 15 may mean glaucoma if a person has baseline 10 may it may rise to 15 and be glaucoma 
and it should be viewed in the light of central colon thickness as it also influences the mayor iop asymmetry as i said is most important and diurnal variation is not to be given the back seat in case we do diurnal variation many of the patients who have been diagnosed as normal tension glaucoma will be diagnosed as primary open angle glaucoma and not only that we have to assess the fall of the intraocular pressure uh, with the drugs because this is the only modifiable risk factor then the gonioscopy where should we do everyone should undergo this whosoever is being worked up for glaucoma no attempt should be made to treat glaucoma without without gonioscopy all the established glaucomas family history of glaucoma raised iop trauma pigment dispersion pseudo exfoliation retinal vascular occlusions all these patients require gonioscopy however raised intraocular pressure is the most important so clues during slit lamp evaluation to the angle closure glaucoma the glaucoma frequency or the pupillary rough atrophy can be subtle signs and this is showing pigment dispersion krukenberg spindle and this is showing pseudo exfoliation material on the margins of the uh, pupil so these are old cases suggestive of secondary glaucoma and iris neo vessels can also be seen one hirex test may be used for screening in busy opd and you can see plateau iris configuration sometimes you are able to make it out but it needs gonioscopic confirmation the technique explain the procedure to the patient room should be darkened slit lamp evaluation of the cornea should be done topical anesthesia to be used two one mirror gonior lens needs to be filled with coupling fluid whereas 5m does not require only tears to do the work please avoid three mirror gonioscope for this purpose patient should maintain the primary gaze low but adequate illumination with small beam to assess the occludability but when you want to understand the details of the angle then you have to use more light and more width Uh, this is showing 3m 3 mirror gonioscopy insertion because that's the most difficult otherwise it is not to be used practically uh, manipulative gonioscopy is gives you the over the hill view you can know from the details by dr ravi thomas that what all this is the, the, he gives details this was i think published in 2000 2001 somewhere in igo move the gaze towards the mirror tilt the lens towards the quadrant ask the patient to look towards the mirror so that is what gives you over the hill view because the iris is convex that is acting like a hill and then you can go peep inside the angle this is how it is done indentation gonioscopy is possible only with four mirror gonioscope it differentiates between the appositional and synecal closure so this is what it is it is shown diagrammatically out here if this cannot be done with the mirrors in which the contact area is more than the size of the cornea so this is how it is opening the angle uh, however this is a problem with four mirror gonioscopy desmets membranes desmets folds sometimes they come up and uh, reduce the vis vis uh, visibility of this so all structures are visible and correct and not be is preserved if it is so then trabecular pigmentation has to be assessed if it is normal then this is a case we are dealing with primary open angle glaucoma or or ocular hypertension or the patient is normal when the trabecular pigmentation is abnormal sample axis line is there we are dealing with uh, pseudo exfoliation and when there is hyperpigmentation we are dealing with pigment dispersion syndrome and uh, when all structures are not visible then if there is poor differentiation and anterior insertion of iris and prominent iris processes then it is congenital or juvenile glaucoma in case there is angle recession iris disinsertion or ciliary body cleft then we are dealing with a case of trauma and peripheral anterior synecae closed angle neo vessels then we are dealing with uveitic or neo vascular glaucoma appositional versus synecal closure this is how it looks like uh, the upper one sh is showing narrow angle and this is opening the one on your left is opening up uh, on compression whereas the right is not opening because that is a synecal closure so gradient schemes are many however uh, for documentation purpose you can simply note down which structures were visible and you can see in the progression over the years you can do because the lens becomes thicker and the air angles become narrower over a period of time and you can always see the structures visible pigmentation convexity of the iris 
presence of peripheral anteriorsynechia or any other abnormality like new vessels and so on all these things need to be noted down the clinical examples this is open versus closed angle this is plateau iris double hump sign these are trabecular meshwork pigmentation amount of pigmentation is varying in these two cases this is non pigmented and the other one is more pigmented ciliary body band uh, you can see out here uh, see this this junction this ciliary band bond band is wider here so what are we dealing with this is angle recession and on the other side there was some synechia and small synechia out here and ciliary body band visible in the other area it is generally taught that a person with ciliary body band uh, visible cannot have angle closure they can have angle closure and it can even be primary angle closure or it can be because of uveitis secondary glaucoma so this is showing multiple iris processes and this is showing new vascularization of the iris these normal vessels can be the size and the shape and the direction is different next is the ultrasound biomicroscopy the high frequency ultrasound is used and this is how it is done in lying down position it redefines and strengthen our concept complementary to our clinical evaluation imaging is elusive of diaphragm and ciliary body complex can be visible because the things there certain things because uh, ubm is is ultrasound based and oct is light based so anything be behind the iris cannot be seen by uh, uh, oct and ubm can see that so the clinical the normal anatomy that's a scler uh, scleral spur and this is showing the open angle and a narrow angle pupillary block can be best assessed by varying the light intensity uh, in with ubm the pre pi and post pi the post pi here is showing the opening of the angle and this is showing pigment dispersion and this is showing zonular iris contact uh, out here and this is rubbing and causing pigment dispersion and traumatic cyclodialysis and this is what is visible out here Uh, post trap shallow ac the causes can be sometimes it is um, not possible to find out although in post operative as doing ubm is extremely difficult but yes it is possible to find out the cause in case you are able to do it in malignant glaucoma also you can find uh, there are specific findings in the uh, ubm the ciliary body gets rotated anteriorly and the ac is very very shallow this is after the treatment and this is uh, topramate uh, drug induced bilateral angle closure showing a regular shallowing of the anterior chamber Sh shown the same thing shown on ubm and this is showing this is showing out here the ciliary choroidal effusion that happens in these cases that optic disc evaluation the final initial diagnosis as i said is always clinical based on the disc assessment and uh, Uh, it is the most vital test as far as the definition of glaucoma as it stands today is concerned so when is a disc glaucomatous notch or rim loss with corresponding defect and in case there is progression progressive structural change as i said the hallmark is asymmetry and progression so if you cannot find anything else then progression has to be looked for and a disc hemorrhage is again suggestive of presence of glaucoma so this is showing a retinal nerve fiber layer defect out here which you can see this is between these two arrows there is rnfl defect and this is showing notching and this is showing other hard signs bionating and uh, uh, the bearing of the circumlinear vessels this is circumlinear vessel the cuff has gone from this size to this size so this is a case of glaucoma so this is advanced glaucoma showing laminar dot sign this and the discs can you know vary in size so that also has to be a very very important consideration a cup disc ratio of 1.2 a cup a cup disc size of 1.2 should not have any any a, a cup in case even 0.2 cup is present it is likely to be glaucoma whereas in a disc of 2.5 mm size a 0.8 cup may not be glaucoma 
so various size discs can be normal like a person of 5 feet and 6 feet they are both normal however the pallor the diffuse pallor is always suggestive of some other neurological problem in addition to glaucoma if glaucoma is present however there are huge variation in the observers when they are examining the glaucomatous cup so you have to be very careful in doing this so you have to be very very well trained in looking at the disc so you look at the 1000 normal disc to be able to you know diagnose really glaucoma however pallor is very specific of non glaucoma so then there can be certain challenges the mimickers of glaucoma tilted disc glaucoma drusens and then the last is perimetry i'll just take one or two minutes i do not know how much is the time left uh, perimetry is the measurement of the function it the gold standard is this is a gold standard test nowadays uh, because this is the functional loss which is most important we need to treat the functional loss this is one minute or the last its time is up finished interpretation i think these are various things i'll not take uh, much time so these are the various areas again there is a article in igo by ravi thomas which gives very very good details of this in early of this century so this vfi is a new addition but you must ensure that you are dealing with the right patient the identification data then there are various strategies ceta standard is 24-2 ceta standard is the standard test for glaucoma nowadays so these are various criteria which you can go through the books so guidelines for the visual field examination learning phase is there in the perimetry most pronounced between first and the second visual field examination please correlate it co clinically because there can be artifacts lead artifacts which can be removed by taping the tip up this is a, a artifact due to rim defect this is peripheral in the lower part and then pupil if small can give you concentric constriction and then wrong correction if it is placed again can give then clover leaf if the patient gets tired and feeling sleepy so what is this is this glaucoma is it fulfilling the anderson criteria the answer is yes but the answer to the first question is no because it's a case of coloboma so the take home message is correlate all findings of history and detailed examination final diagnosis is always clinical treat human beings and not intraocular pressure or treatment or the visual fields and human beings have felt needs they have financial constraints they have symptoms and side effects they have social bindings and limitations and not the least psychological effects the psychological effects of glaucoma diagnosis or even that of glaucoma suspect can be immense and can significantly reduce the quality of life so diagnose very carefully thank you so much <laughs> Thank you, Manav. I think that was wonderfully done because you really emphasized the major parts. And the most important, what he said was that never, please, never take one or two diagnoses. For now, every day we keep seeing pressure. I was ten years since his glaucoma was going on. So please be very, very careful because you have to correlate. If the pressure is high, is the cornea thick? And especially in children, every day we'll get children like he has shown a video also. taking a pressure is an art it is not a science the moment they blink a little bit more you will get 40 pressure so it is you cannot just take that pressure at all so you have to really see everything else and if they correlate yes there is a notch over there where there is a field defect like he very classically showed because once you label as glaucoma like he rightly showed in his last slide so beautifully that uh, somebody's life may be totally shattered keep keep this slide on please for a few seconds and what i have what we have seen is the, the slide the last slide the take home message the slide red in an oct i have seen people the patient comes to me and say sir he is saying the doctor is saying i'll go blind what the hell well please for god sake never utter that word blind if he goes blind then what the hell are you there sitting for so please be very very careful that word is as a matter of fact the last thing when the patient leaves your chamber is that i will take care of you you will never go blind even if it is a lie you bloody tell them doesn't matter it will make them live their lives okay otherwise you are shattering their life in one second so very nicely and very rightly said sir manadeep and we'll take all the questions in the end if there's some burning question you can please ask him 
Dr. Harsh sir, we, we routinely see patients, children with syndromes and with pressures 30. They don't progress. They never progress because their coronal thickness is 700. So, this is very, very common, especially in, in syndromic children. So, so, we need not be very, you know, worried about those things and we need not to put psychological pressure on the patient as Dr. Harsh rightly said. So, we are treating human beings. Please remember we are treating human beings. Thank you, Manu.